this series of videos I'm attempting to repair and restore this HP 9845B vintage computer. So far I've completely dismantled the unit into its major sub-assemblies and I went through the power supply, fixed a few minor faults with that. But the system um, just won't boot up at all, it's um, almost uh, completely dead. The two processors um, are now trying to go through their startup routine but the PPU is failing to start up properly. The LPU does seem to be trying to start up but because it interacts with the PPU um, it again is uh, failing to really get properly initialized. Now I'd found some faults with the system and in particular a couple of interesting faults with the two hybrid modules not so much with the modules themselves but the way they are attached to the two CPU cards. I was going to post that in this video but um, I've decided to save that for a completely separate video. It is quite interesting but what it amounted to was um, not all the connections on the hybrid modules were making it through to the PCB and as I say I'll post um, the issue, the fault and, and the solution to that in a separate video but once I'd fixed that I started getting some activity on the two CPU cards before that they were completely dead and uh, then as I say at that point they started trying to um, boot up but were failing so in this video we'll see uh, what uh, is going on try and figure out uh, exactly what's causing this there are other faults I know about but not that it should stop the system from at least initially going through the boot up phase. So um, just to recap on the way this uh, machine boots up, it is quite interesting. We have the two processors, the LPU on the right, the PPU on the left. Each has its own ROM and RAM card, but during the initial boot up, both of them use the uh, ROM in block 5 which is on the ROM card on the left, the PPU ROM card and there's some boot up code in that that um, is intended to allow the two processors to figure out which processor they are. Sounds a bit weird but they look at the halt line going into the uh, hybrid module. It's not used as a halt line on this machine. Um, it's used so that the two processors can figure out which processor they are on the uh, LPU. That line is grounded on the uh, board itself so it will always be low and on the PPU it's actually connected through to the monitor and it's driven from the vertical drive signal. So a series of uh, low going one millisecond pulses once every 16.7 milliseconds. And to uh, simulate that I've got this little breadboard arrangement and um, that provides the required signal uh, in lieu of the monitor. So the, uh, in other words, the two um, uh, CPUs should still be able to start up even though the monitor is not plugged in. What's happening is um, the LPU is going through the startup. It's actually not going through the startup properly, but the result is it thinks it is, and we'll look at this in a few minutes. But when we try and look at the PPU, it's just not doing what it's supposed to. And because the main monitor program that drives the system is in the PPU code that's never been jumped to, the system effectively doesn't start up. And it kind of stays in reset, so it never really starts up and the system remains dead. So there's no activity on the uh, CRT driver card, for example all the counters are uh, completely dead, they're not doing anything and uh, the same is true of all the other parts of the system apart from the uh, code in the two hybrid modules continually looping around trying to start up and failing. So we'll look at this now in a bit more detail. Currently I've got the logic analyzer attached to the LPU test connector so we're looking at the uh, address bus, uh, data bus in a demultiplexed uh, manner on the logic analyzer and if you want to see how that's set up if you uh, look at a video I posted recently on how to demultiplex using an HP logic analyzer I explain how this is set up. I won't go back over that in this video but um, just bear in mind that what we're looking at on the logic analyzer is the de 
multiplexed um, address and data bus. We're not looking directly at the signals. Uh, so we'll uh, have a look at the logic analyzer, um, start with the LPU and see how far through it's getting the startup. So as I said, this is set up to demultiplex the address and data bus. And this is inside the buffers and drivers for the two main buses on the system. So we've got the X and the Y bus, but this um, logic analyzer is connected directly to the hybrid module, not to the main buses. So we're seeing exactly what the hybrid module is seeing. So what I'm going to do is turn the HP on. I'm going to press and hold the stop key so it will hold it and reset. We'll arm the analyzer. I release the key and it should start running, which we have done. So you can see it's jumped to bank 25. It's looking for the diagnostic ROM. That's not plugged in, so it'll quickly jump to bank five and start trying to run the startup code. To make this explanation easier, we'll look at the listing instead. So if we come through and we look at the listing for the address and data so as I said this is the demultiplexed data so we're looking at pretty much what the um, hybrid module is decoding the data as and we can see that it really gets to this point here at address 200 and that is the startup code for the um, this is in the PPU bank 5 ROM and uh, what it does it goes through it writes to uh, it accesses a bit of RAM and that's why we're seeing these uh, bank one or block one um, accesses the block one is RAM and so each time we get an instruction that tries to access RAM we'll see um, the block number change to one so it's just bear in mind that's just writing to RAM and you can ignore that for the, uh, the purpose of this uh, demonstration. Uh, if we keep going down, then we get to this first instruction here, this that uh, starts SHC, and this is a, uh, it's checking the uh, halt line, so it's uh, basically skip if halt is clear, and if it is clear, um, if, it's, sorry, if it's not clear, it will jump to the address offset shown here so this instruction has a six bit um, field for an offset jump and in this case it's 10 and so it will jump 10 addresses if that line is high now because this is the LPU that line will always be low so it will never jump however there's an issue here that um, if we get through to the instruction at 207 so 207 is this instruction and that is the SHC instruction and this should be uh, a value of 7DCA. However, if you look on the analyzer, I don't know if you can see it, it's saying 79CA, not 7DCA. In other words, bit 10 is wrong. Now in this case, uh, that instruction um, 79CA decodes to a stack instruction so it's not going to do what it's supposed to. Now in this case it doesn't actually matter because the LPU will never branch to the startup code anyway so ultimately what would happen if it did branch either it's going to jump 10 addresses from this point or if it comes back after a short delay and checks again it will jump seven addresses but either one of those jumps will take us through to here and that's a jump to the monitor and the reason there's two jumps is because as I say this instruction is only a six bit offset so it's, it can't jump far enough to jump straight to the monitor. So we should end up here for the PPU and it should jump to the um, block three code which is what this is for the LPU and in this case it does indeed jump through to the LPU. Now there's always going to be a four millisecond delay when the LPU starts up because the first test is always going to fail because the line's tied to ground. But if we scroll through four milliseconds, it's about 4.3 milliseconds is the point where the, uh, the delay that it waits before it retests. So we'll go to 4.3 milliseconds 
point in code and it's where you can see this um, address 209 that's the delay loop here and it just loops round and round waiting for the A register to reach zero and then it retests that line and again for the LPU it will always be low and what it should then do is jump through to block 3 at address 200 and that's exactly what it's doing it's jumping through to address 200 on block 3 and so that's doing exactly what it's supposed to and so it appears as if though it's uh, reading the right values from wrong but as we saw the values are actually incorrect if we go back to the beginning both the um, line at 207 and also the line at 20A, if we go down and look for 20A, so if we look at 20A, notice that value is, or the data at that point is 79C7, and again it should be 7DC7, so once again bit 10 is incorrect. So what I'll do now is I'll turn the machine off, I'll move the uh, logic analyzer across to the PPU, and we'll see what that um, processor is doing. The logic analyzer is now connected to the PPU test connector. All the connections are the same, it's just on the other processor. So I'll turn the HP back on. I'll press and hold the stop key, arm the analyzer, and we'll capture some data. So once again, notice it's doing exactly the same thing. It's jumping to block 25, which is what it should do and then it's ending up at address 200. It's actually the identical code in the same ROM that the LPU is using. And once again, the values are correct. So this processor also seems to be able to read successfully from that ROM. So we should see a value of 7118 at this address, and that's exactly what we're seeing. However, once again, if we go down to line 207, that's address 207, we're getting the exact same value of 79CA. So this should, once again, be 7DCA. So it's the wrong instruction that's being obtained from the ROM. Now there's quite a few devices between the ROM and the hybrid modules. And so it wasn't just necessarily the case that the ROM has failed. But because both of the hybrid modules have seen exactly the same problem, it does tend to point towards the ROM. However, when I connected the logic analyzer directly to the ROM, we'll do that in a few minutes, the values coming out of it seemed correct. That is, they were showing 7D CA, not 79 CA, so it looked like something else in the system. However, I still believe it's the ROM. So I'll reconfigure the logic analyzer. Unfortunately, I can't just connect the analyzer uh, pod direct to the ROM with the current setup because we've got this in a, multi a demultiplex mode um, we wouldn't get the proper reading so bear in mind when it's capturing these values these are not actually occurring at the same time and if we tried capturing uh, data from the ROMs using the two clocks we're using to do this we wouldn't actually see the correct data because um, it would capture data at the wrong time this is another reason why I don't normally use the multiplex mode. It um, yeah, makes it difficult to see exactly what's going on. We really need to use the system clocks rather than the um, memory access clocks. So I'll reconfigure the logic analyzer. I'll put it into non um, the multiplex mode. So just bear in mind, we'll have to uh, look through the data the, the hard way. Um, but we want to look at the ROM values and see what's coming out of the ROM and also I'll explain why the values initially seem to be correct when in fact I don't believe they are. So I've got the analyzer connected to the ROM so it's connected now directly to the ROM so I'll hold the HP and reset we'll arm the analyzer release the reset and we've captured some data so we'll see what we're getting the analyzer is connected to the lower of the uh, pair of ROMs so we should be getting the lower part of the expected data so we'll scroll across and see if we're getting anything at all and indeed we are so we've got the value at the top here 
in this case it's 21 which is the correct value and down at the bottom we're seeing 21 in the data. The address will be wrong because um, I'm clocking using the chip enable line of the ROM. We can't use the main system clock because the way the timing works on this machine uh, we would always miss the correct uh, data point. So I'm using chip enable that's the point at which it should output the correct data and um, as I say the only thing to bear in mind is the address will then be wrong because the address has changed um, the, the address was latched into the ROM and um, we're now really only interested in looking at the data which is after all the data coming out that's incorrect so uh, the first um, part looks alright we'll carry on and we'll check some more so we're getting 1E e, 1E e, and that uh, is again correct look at the next one 6C and 6C zero that's correct so they're looking correct so we're getting FF and FF so all the bits seem to be able to toggle so we've gone from zero zero to FF so it looks like all the bits on that ROM are capable of toggling 6C again 6C so looks like the data coming out of that ROM is um, correct at least in a very sort of superficial way we obviously haven't done a lot of in-depth checking here what I'm going to do now is move the um, test clip from the analyzer onto the upper ROM of the pair and we'll see what's coming out of that that's the one that seemed to be giving us the wrong value is bit 10 um, that we were having an issue with that's not to say there aren't problems with the other bits but um, that's the one that we know um, seem to be returning the wrong value so that is in the uh, upper ROM of the pair so I'll get the test clip moved and we'll try this again I now have the analyzer connected to the upper ROM of that pair we'll turn the machine back on hold it in reset rearm the analyzer and capture some more data and we have some data so we'll start scrolling across see what we've got uh, we should have 6F and we are indeed getting 6F so that looks okay so far it's the upper um, byte we're looking at here we'll keep scrolling across and see what we get 30 and 30 so that's correct and these values are not looking correct it looks like we're getting some errors as we're going through the ROM so um, it does indeed look like we're getting some uh, odd values here some are working fine so 03 and 03 that's working so some bits are working some addresses seem fine other addresses are just returning the wrong value but they seem fairly random so I don't think it's external to the ROM it looks like it's the ROM itself that is failing so some are fine and it's it doesn't seem to be specific to certain bits it looks like we've got uh, just uh, random errors in the data that's coming out Okay, so it looks like we're getting a, uh, a failed ROM. So the next thing I'm going to do for the next video is I'll pop the ROM out of the board. I do have a reader that can read it. We'll see what the contents are and if they match what's expected. And uh, we'll go from there. If we need to, um, I'll make up a, a replacement ROM module using a more modern um, EEPROM. It's not just as straightforward as dropping in a replacement um, EEPROM and rerouting a few of the wires to make the pinouts the same because the ROMs used on the HP machine have latches built into their address inputs so um, we would need to include that if we make some replacement modules. 
but the original mask ROMs of course aren't available so uh, really the only solution is to uh, make up some replacements if it turns out that's what the problem is. The ROMs are used um, fairly extensively so that particular ROM type is used in other places in this machine and other machines so um, it might be worth doing that so we have some uh, replacements. If it's something you think you might find useful let me know and um, as I said the uh, general aim would be to make a small 24 pin plug-in module that contained uh, an onboard EEPROM that could be programmed with different ROM code but would include the uh, latches on the address inputs so that they could be a direct drop-in replacement for the type of ROM that's used in this machine. So as I say, if that's something you think you'd be interested in, then let me know.